All right, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, citizens of YouTube. This is Pastor Dow. I'm here with Brother Tyler and Brother Paul. And uh, what we want to try to speak about here this morning, try to get everybody a, a pretty much a world-rounded uh, worldview, at least in the Western Hemisphere view, over guns and the sentiments of it and, and what people think about them. Because I know in the United States, you know, we're, we're pretty much um, a, a gun advocate country. I mean, when President Barack Hussein Obama took office, uh, the first thing that people did was actually go out and buy more guns. And the reason why they ended up buying more guns is simply because uh, they were fearing the gun confiscation or either some type of gun laws that would prohibit people from being able to exercise their Second Amendment right. Now, with the nature of this video is not um, uh, trying to speak against government or to uh, uh, actually oppose government because government is there to do its job. We're here to give you a personal opinion about our thoughts about guns and, and, and why we think that people should have guns in order to protect themselves, especially since we see though that the world that we live in is going from bad to worse. So with that, we'll start with you first, Brother Tyler. So Brother Tyler, um, you're a gun advocate up here in Canada, is that correct? Yep. All right, and um, so can you kind of explain to us in your own words, in your own words, um, what the, the reason why uh, that you as a Canadian citizen um, have, have chosen to actually uh, protect yourself uh, and whoever you have, whoever else is going to come apart of you, your family, um, with firearms. Well, you know, in Canada we have a lot of crazy people. I think. God love them and everything, but they're out there. There's a lot of them. And uh, as, as as far as guns are concerned, the gun crime is very low. Crime is generally lower in northern countries. Um, but in either case, you still want to protect yourself. Even if you're in the country, in the rural areas, there's a high, high number of gun ownership. Mostly because of uh, hunters and uh, just farmers have to protect their, their animals from uh, bears and, and bulls and uh, coyotes and the koi wolves now that wolves have bred with the coyotes. Uh, fishers, all sorts of wildlife you have to protect your animals from. And uh, I think even in the rural areas of Canada, it's, it's higher gun ownership in rural areas than in, in, in the United States rural areas. Um, really? Yeah. So there are a whole bunch of people here. So the people that live in Canada in rural areas, you believe that they have a, um, they possess and own more firearms than the actual rural areas of the people in the United States? I, I know so. Every one of my neighbors owns at least four guns. Uh, most of them own 12, 18, 20. So why, why is it that the, um, uh, I guess the media uh, here in this country, uh, but the country in itself, because I can tell that they're very opposed to at least somebody crossing the border with guns. But why is it that it, uh, that nobody here can pretty much carry a gun on their person uh, if they're legal and lawful or they're allowed to carry, if there's a such thing that people are allowed to carry? Can you explain to us that aspect? Well, as far as self-defense goes, it's very, we're, we live in a very polite society, a very compliant society. That is true. A passive society, as the pastor says, and uh, this has led to, of course, people not wanting to defend themselves in many cases. And of course, because of the low crime rate, it creates this, uh, the, the premonition that we don't have to defend ourselves because there is no threat. Well, there is, maybe it's a little bit different. But uh, it, it's there. And as far as self-defense goes, the legalities of it, you can defend yourself as much as that person is attacking you. So if somebody has a gun and they shoot you, you're legally allowed to shoot them. But only if they shoot you. And by that time, you're probably already very wounded or dead. And uh, I know there, in one instance there was a guy, and this is just talking about martial arts, there was a very, a very, a very fatigued guy. He knew martial arts and he was being attacked by a six foot seven big huge bodybuilder guy. And the, the petite guy actually won the fight. However, he was jailed for uh, I think it was about a year or six months or something like that. Simply because he won the fight. And it, it's just punishing the victor instead of the victim. That's just, punishing the victim, sorry. Yeah, that's, that doesn't... That's nonsensical to me, at least in my understanding uh, and reason. I, I don't know, of course, you know, I, uh, here in America, we have a kangaroo court system. I mean, it really is. It's a circus. It's a dog and pony show. The theater is just massive, and it's just sad. So um, switching over here to you, Brother Paul. You live close to Toronto or in Toronto in the big city and stuff, and I'm sure um, you see a different attitude in the city as opposed to the rural environment. 
So what is the difference in the, uh, Toronto, the big major city? I mean, is it kind of like Chicago and New York and, and, and these other gun-free areas in America where people are, are killing and murdering and shooting up each other? Or is it pretty much a, the same passive type of environment, um, but yet the crime rate is still high? Which one is it? Well, we do have a crime rate. Uh, the interesting thing is that for about the last 15 years in both Toronto and across Canada, the crime rate has been declining steadily. But yet the government is building more prisons, uh, even though the crime rate is declining. And in recent years, the police forces are asking for more funding to expand. And, you know, the public, of course, complains, like, well, why do we want to pay more taxes for more police if crime is going down? Correct. And interestingly, just in this year alone, out of nowhere, gun crime has skyrocketed in Toronto. Oh, really? It's almost like people have brought guns in on purpose to, you know, stage events or something. Well, in to... a lot of instances, that's exactly what happened, because after the Sandy Hook shooting, I noticed there was all sorts of news reports on people in Toronto getting their gun licenses and restricted licenses buying pistols and long rifles. Oh, so the, pretty much the same sentiment happens here as it does in the United States anytime that there's what they stage as a gun crime. Now, I don't believe that anything is a gun crime. I think it's a people crime. I think people use a gun, you know what I mean? Because y'all heard my sentiments on the video that if we're going to start using this type of logic and reasoning, then we need to ban airplanes since the airplanes are the ones that do the people drove the airplane or flew the airplanes into the Twin Towers and, and caused a lot of you know, death and destruction on the people. So, you know, that kind of logic and reasoning is totally nonsensical to me. Um, so, I mean, when what they call a gun crime takes place, the very opposite happens. People actually go out and buy more guns as opposed to wanting regulation to get rid of them. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And, uh, just to finish my earlier point, uh, the city is a little different than rural areas. Um, brother is actually absolutely correct in the rural areas. The gun laws are a little more lax because you have wildlife. You're allowed to keep a loaded gun in your home. In the city, you cannot. Your gun must be in a safe, locked up with a trigger lock, uh, unloaded. Your in ammo, of concrete, six feet underground. Uh, you know, <laughs> ammo has to be either locked separate in a separate location, or they have to be in a locked environment where you can't get to them. And there is no. Unless you're a law enforcement officer, security, or military, there is no open carry, there's no concealed carry. In Canada, you can own a firearm for two purposes, either for hunting or for sport. So pistols are considered restricted weapons. Uh, long rifles, shotguns are non-restricted. And so some, some rifles like AR-15s are considered restricted as well simply because they can be modified to supposedly be fully automatic, which is completely false. But all right, we're going to cut this first part of this interview right here, and we're going to come back with part two here in just a second, because I'm sure that people are going to enjoy it. All right, Shalom. Shalom.